This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God, your house, to declare unto you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is. How that Jesus Christ died by our sins, according to Scripture. He was buried. He rose again the third day, according to the Scripture. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he's anointed me, preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, come to sight to the blind, set at liberty, and that are brutal. The word is not even in your heart, in your head. There's a word of faith, which I preach, you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart, God. Believe in your heart, you shall be saved. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. Everyone would not believe it, that the Jew first, and also to the Greek, then is the righteousness God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. I want to welcome everyone to this broadcast. We receive again live stream, Roku, Apple TV. YouTube, and other devices. Kathy Davidson seated on my left. Call host. Hello, Kathy. Hello. I've got some things I want to say, and then we will be doing some songs of Terry Bye and Water by Boy. We are going to teach I am the scriptures that was taught in Water Life Christian Training School in 19, beginning in 1983 and ended in 1990. You were, and this is all I'm going to say now. This is a new, a new approach. God showed me something. Thank God. Let's have turn by songs, then uh, Terry Brown, that's God on the, on the mountain. Oh, 
Mr. Brown's going to come, minister a song first. Katie, would you read Ezekiel 36? Oh, sure will. Amen. Thank God. Ezekiel 36, 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I clean water is the gospel. Amen. It'll cleanse you. Gary Brown's been with this ministry since 1985. God has done a marvelous work in my heart, Kathy Lee's, <coughs> and Terry Brown's. Change it. Giving us a new heart. Still in process. Working on all three of us. Terry's going to sing God on the Mountain. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known. But then things change and you're down in the valley. Don't lose faith for you're not. It's down in the valley of trials and temptation. That's when your faith is really put to the test. For the God on the Down in that valley of trials and temptation, that's when your faith is really put to the test. For the God on the mountain, He's still God in the valley. Oh uh -huh. 
Yes, the God of the day is still God in the night. Oh, the God of your day, He's still God in your night. Did I ask you to read? Second Corinthians 4. You, before the program started, we read it. Okay. I mean, verse 8 or 9. And first, uh, Second Corinthians 4, I read four verses, 4 or 5. How many verses is in it? In the chapter 18. 18? Mm -hmm. uh, the Lord is changing what we're doing. Thank God. Water Blind Christian Training School at 239 hours. Teaching. Most of them were line upon line, precept upon precept. Amen. I don't think any person got the full revelation of the gospel out of that school. I'm, I'm serious. I was one disappointed person. Frankly, Kathy D is the only one that got a lot of revelation of what I thought. She listened. She had a heart that would listen. My friends, I'm going to have some proof. God told me, 1970, that was what he wanted from me. John 15. Proof. The gospel brings forth proof. Nothing else. The gospel's power. Amen. So, I'm going to be preaching the gospel every time. That, where does it talk about in that fourth chapter? We have a treasure uh, about the eighth, the ninth, tenth, seventh verse. verse. What? Seventh verse. What's eight say? Eight is we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. So it's the seventh verse. It's the seventh verse. All right. In a minute, I want you to read the first seven. I got you. Now, I'm going to say something to people that have been to college. Your college education is a hindrance to you. Amen. Hindrance. I've got over 200 hours University level, six years, and none of it helped me, all hindered me. The problem with people, they're full of pride. They know everything just with their mind, not their heart. The hardest person to talk to is someone that thinks their mind is anointed. They've got a great mind. They're the most dangerous people you can deal with. You say, what about you? Oh. You should have lived in this body. You wouldn't think you were anything. You wouldn't think you were anything. If you knew how God humbled me. Humbled me. Now, I'm not going to talk about everything. 
Jesus said, at least by example, and here, twelve apostles, and he's after his three years with them, he sent twelve, he sent seven, about one hundred and twenty were baptized in the Holy Ghost. Spoken to I've been at this since 1980 teaching. And I can see unless you have a revelation of the gospel, the rest of the foundation is a waste. It's up here. Not your heart. It's got to be in the heart, folks. Now, something I've noticed. The Gospel, 1 Corinthians 4, 19 and 20, is power. The Apostle Paul said, If I come, I'll know. Not that. Puffed up with speech, but power. So, some covet power. And their heart is full of covetousness. But it's not right with God. I just thank God he taught me every bit of this. I take no credit. None. I open myself greatly. Because I have to have a pretty good mind. And it wasn't easy to put it on the shelf. I used to say, if we could take your head off and put it in your pocket, we'd do well. Amen. You ever heard that? Oh, yeah. I remember you shared where God told you, if you can't figure out between your ears, you can't believe it. Boy, I was sick. You know, that's most people. Yeah. Thank God. What time is it? It is 11.27. Amen. I want you to read the first seven verses. St. Corinthians 4. Sure will. What? Verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Three, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Four, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Five, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Six, for God, who commanded the light to come shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Seven, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. That's what I was looking for. You know, I'm not complaining that I've been able to read the Bible for eight years. Uh, I told you I was a bit nervous doing this, but I'm going to get over it. The Lord 
has ordained this. Amen. And I thought Second Corinthians 7, uh, 4 said those very things. Power. Right? That's right. Is what? It says, but we have this treasure in earthly vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. There you go. Thank you, Lord. Well, I know one thing. You may not be able to read it, but you got a lot of it in your heart. Well, did you know that verse right there was what I was after? Amen. Excellently, excellently, let's see. The power is of God, not of us. Amen. Sorcerers operate their power. Witchcraft. I operate God's power. Amen. To the Holy Ghost. My heart, full of the gospel. And what? Did my heart do? What did God do? That gospel shine into my heart. The glorious light shine into my heart. And expose the darkness in it. Bring that six Five, six, seven again. Five, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Six, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Seven, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. You see, when that light of the glorious gospel shines in your heart, it'll shake you up. Amen. Did you know most people will not come to the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ? They will not let that light shine into their heart. Because when it shines in their heart, it licks both all the wickedness of your heart. All of the wickedness. Jeremiah, what is it? Seventeen nine or that nine seventeen? That the heart a man is deceitful above all things. That's really wicked. Who can know it? That's really wicked. Who can know it? Heart, deceitful. Is that 9 17? It is. 17, huh? it is 17 9. 17. The heart is des uh, deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? There you go. And you know what? That gospel shining into that desperately wicked, deceitful heart will expose it. It'll expose it. And out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will shout it reluctantly. Oh, I love to watch the gospel get into some wicked, deceitful heart. That's all of us. Amen. I dare what comes out. Can I read John 3, 19, 20? I don't know. Ready? <laughs> and this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. And everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. See, we talk how we blow. Amen. Right here. Amen. That's just beautiful. Their deeds are evil. Amen. 
Right? That's right. Read that again. It says, and this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. And everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. They won't come to the light and the glorious gospel. Their deeds are evil, and they don't even want to face them themselves. Boy, when that light hits, it hurts. Oh. It hurts. Sure does. What does that mean? It is 1134. 44? 34. 34. I think we probably have the first lesson that God wants to talk about. That's an evil heart that will not let the gospel come in the Will not. Why? Because it's hard. Their deeds are evil, and they don't want their deeds made known. Oh, my friends, it was sickening for the gospel to shine into my heart and show me what I was. But my heart was. I couldn't believe it. No, I couldn't believe it. You know, I got to tell one thing. I dealt with a man a length that denied sins he committed. They're not. And in court, he had the opportunity to take 10 years probation. He said, no, I have not committed these sins. I said, if you've not committed them, I wouldn't say, tell them that I had. You know what he got? 99 years. You know why? Because he knew he had committed them. And he knew what they were. And he knew where they were committed. And so do you. Can you do your show? I'm, I'm going to finish with the next verse there, 21. Okay. That he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. God wrought in you with that light. Amen. All right. I'm going to just continue right on with what you're saying. If you will turn with me to Philippians 3, we'll show, we're going to go on to what God is going to have me minister. Philippians 3, verse 10, that we may know him and the power of his resurrection, that we may know Jesus. And what I'm going to do is start to minister to us Jesus that Jesus. And if you will go with me to Revelations 13, I'm going to read a verse and I'm going to use the second part of the verse. And all dwell and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. All that dwell on the earth shall worship him. Even those whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb, of the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Jesus was slain from the foundation of the world. Now, we're going to take a look at Amen. this Jesus, this Jesus. If you will turn with me to John uh, chapter 1, verse 1, we're going to find out where Jesus was. What was he? All right, John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If you ask a little third grader, a nine-year-old, this verse and read it to them. They wouldn't get into a, a, a physiological discussion or, or go into a lot of spirituality. What he would say was, well, that's easy. There's two. There was two. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. There were two gods. It says, the same was in the beginning with God. Two of them. 
One was with the other. The same was in the beginning with God. And what was one of them? It was the Word. The Word. The Word. The words that you read out of this book were a God, was a God. And it says, verse 3, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Turn with me to Colossians 1. Amen. Nothing was made without this God. Colossians 1, verse 16, for by him, Jesus. If you look up a little further, you'll see we're talking about Jesus. For by him were all things created, all things created by Jesus that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and all things were created for him. Amen. For he is before all things and by him were all things consist. Notice, he is before all things. He was before anything that was made. He made them. He was before they were. He was with God and he was God. He was the word. Do you know that Jesus always existed as that God? He uh -huh. always existed. Wrap your little intellectual brains around that one. He always existed and uh -huh. so did the Father. They always existed. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Now, how are they created? Go with me to Hebrews 1. Hebrews 1, chapter 1, verse 1. God, who at sundry times, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spoke at times past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. And look what he did with his Son. Look what he did with Jesus, the one that was the Word, the one that was with him. What did he do with Jesus? The second part, by whom also, by whom Jesus also, he made the world. You know, we were taught at the very beginning, God created the world. That is true. How did he do it? By his son, Christ Jesus. By the word. Amen. By that other God that was with him. He created the world. Don't know that? Ephesians 3, verse 9. Ephesians 3, verse 9. To make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God. In God. God, who created all things. How did he create them? By Christ Jesus. By Christ uh -huh. Jesus. Do you uh -huh. see how the two gods work together? All things were created by Jesus, for Jesus. And God created all things by Christ Jesus. They work together. Turn with me to Gen Genesis 1. Amen. We're going to see how that happened. This God in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The two in the beginning. And if you will go with me to Genesis 1, verse 26, and God said, and God said, let us, let us. He didn't say let me, and he didn't say let you. He said let us. Let us make man in our image. We just read that. God created all things by Christ Jesus. And Jesus is the creator of all things. All things were made by Jesus and for Jesus. It said, God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness. You want to know what God looks like? He looks like us. He looks uh, like us. He said, let us make man in our image. So God uh, must have two arms and two legs and two eyes, and two ears, and a mouth. He said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing, creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God, and if you look that word God up, and you study it out, it's plural. It's plural. That word God is plural. What it should say, God's. God's. 
Yeah, you say, how can that be? John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. When you see this Word, that the two of them work together, and they always will work together, and they work together to bring about our salvation. It says, and God created man, the gods created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Now, I want you to see something interesting. Go with me to chapter 2, verse 7. Chapter 2, verse 7, this God that was with God. It said, and the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. Formed him out of the dust of the ground. If you look up the word Adam, it means earth. It means dirt. That's what Adam means, dirt. He formed the man out of the dust of the ground. And look what he did. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The breath of life. He breathed into the nostrils of this mud pie the breath of life. Amen. And the man became a living soul. Go back with me again to John 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him, without Jesus, was not anything made that was made. Do you see that? Anything that was made, it was made by Jesus. And now look at verse 4. Remember, they took the man that was made out of the ground, and they breathed in that man's nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. Now look at verse 4 of John 1. John 1, 4, in him was life. In Jesus that God that was with God was life, and the life was the light of men. What did they breathe into that form, that Adam that made out of the dust of the ground? They breathed into him the spirit of Jesus, Amen. and he became a living soul. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and that is the beginning, and that's where we're going to stop today. And we have about 16 minutes or 14 minutes left. 14 minutes. Uh-huh. Oh, thank God. Thank God in man. Bless God. Let's uh, go to Mark chapter 1. All right. Thank God. Now you're going to get Mark chapter 1. Push in front of your eyes and ears for every time i come aboard. Amen. You're going to hear it. God is going to break that stony heart of yours by the power of God and get in with this gospel. My faith is much stronger than it used to be when I did water blood Christian training school. Much stronger. Your heart hasn't changed a bit. Hard, prideful, arrogant. God is going to bring forth some fruit. Oh, I will not stop. God ordained these hours for me. And fruit to that assembly, John 15 said that's what he wanted. Amen. Right? That's right. Fruit. Let's read that then, Mark 1. Sure will. Read verse 8 or 10 verses. What glorifies God in John 15. John 15, verse 1. I am the true vine. And my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now are you clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. 
If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Seven, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Eight, herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Amen. Now, let's go to Mark 1. Mark 1, verse 14. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent you and believe the gospel. Now, Jesus is my example. He's your example. And he started his ministry preaching the gospel. The gospel is defined in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Would you read? I'm headed there right now. Thank God. I'm enjoying this. Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. There's a the gospel. There is a the gospel. I'm, I'm going to tell you, a mind is the most dangerous thing a human being can have. A little that. Once I was doing some reading of a paper that was written, written, and was read by a professor and by a student thought they were smart and that those passages were present in this paper and it said what if or is it verse 3 verse 2 if you keep in memory what I preached unto you unless you have believed in vain okay and it was said that you had to keep in memory what was preached to you unless you believed in vain. And this wise woman wrote, not to me, it doesn't say that. Is that incredible? What it says, she said, not say that to me. Well, sure it did. She couldn't have said it didn't occur to her, right? Well, what she was saying then is the word of God is a lie. Well, no, but not to me. It yeah. doesn't say that. Yeah. Nobody said what that was. <laughs> Amen. Stupid college woman. Where are we at? We have about eight minutes left. Good. Seven minutes, yeah. But I've read that, her notation. I thought, how arrogant can you be? Amen. You talk about super arrogance. I mean, how can you possibly look at something and say, that doesn't say that to me, unless you know what it's saying? Right? Right. Oh, do I have fun with pseudo intellects? Pseudo intellects. Kathy, do you know of any person that you've heard that God taught to read reading the Bible? Yeah, Smith Wigglesworth. That's what I thought. 
It was I, said that, that he learned how to read by reading the Bible. I thought I remembered that. Yeah. And I didn't want to stick this out and be wrong. But my friends, if you want your children to be good readers, put them in the Psalms. Amen. I, am a, I have a degree as a reading specialist. And that's what I did with my children. They learned how to read the Psalms. It says that the Bible is written on the fifth grade level. Yeah. But the only reason it says that, because I've had to, I've had to use formulas to, to reach what a reading level is at a certain passage of, of words or sentences. And the reason it's on the fifth grade level is not because the words are too hard, because they're not. Most of the Bible is written with words that are less than three syllables long. That's right. The only reason they say it's fifth grade level is because the length of the sentences. Because right. you know that the verses will go and, 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 and. But when you break them down, no, a second grader can read the Psalms slowly, but they can read them. Yeah, they, I love what we're doing. Amen. Playing to the humble, preaching to the humble. Right. Not the arrogant. Not the arrogant. You know, and I've heard adults say, well, I can't read the word. I can't read very well. You start in the Psalms, and God will teach you how to read. One of the great men, great men of my time, great men, spiritual men of my time, Smith Wigglesworth. I was born in 32, and he died in 47. A great man of God couldn't read. God taught him to read and gave him a revelation of the Word when he was reading it. Amen. You see, and I, I fear for you people that think your education is something or not something. I do. Can I add one more thing here? Please. Because you've walked the same path. Your revelation came out of the Bible in no other religious books. And Smith would, said for years and years, he said, I only have I've read one book, and that's the Bible. That's all. And that was one of the first things I heard when I came here. To, I got rid of all my other books, all the other ones I had. How much time have I got? You've got about three minutes. Three minutes. President Kennedy, assassination, shook this guy up. I was in Dallas, Texas. It's a bear ground. X ran the horse when he got killed. You were about two miles away. Well, yeah, five or six, yeah, maybe. maybe. I don't even know exactly. Close. Close. Um, I went to the Bible in, six, in uh, 65 for an answer. I looked at it. I couldn't. I couldn't see it. I was a shaken man. In 67, I went back to it. In 68 and 69, I had the Bible under the front seat of my Pontiac. And I'd be driving, going to street or I pull over. I don't recommend this. But I'd open the Bible and a verse would stand up and talk to me. Now, I knew a man sick, a preacher, knew him well, said he'd call a woman, she'd Go to the Bible, find his answer. I was easier than praying. God have mercy. 
my friends, God was revealing that word to me. What I don't recommend is calling somebody uh, or opening the Bible and saying it's God speaking. And I'm not saying it won't be. But I'll tell you, when that verse stands up about three-eighths of an inch, at your face, you'll wonder what's going on. That happened 68 and 69 to me. Stood up. I thought, what is this? Uh, you may not believe this, and I'm sure you don't, but I don't really care. When that word starts standing up about three of an inch in your face, you'll say, my God, what's going on? Time. Uh, we are out of time. No other name. No other name. Just one. Jesus. A master. No other name. Other son. You can save me. But Jesus, a master. You got the faith. You got the grace. God put it there. Speak, Jesus. Be saved. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327. Plano, Texas, 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas, 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.